This podcast is a production of Widener Law Commonwealth in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. For more information, visit commonwealthlaw.widener.edu slash podcast. Hello, and welcome to Widener Law Commonwealth's podcast. I'm your host, Tara Mead. The goal of most, if not all, law school students is to ensure they have the skills, experience, and of course, the education to have a successful legal career following graduation. That means students have to spend a great deal of time developing and refining strategies to help them gain employment. So today we'll get to hear from Eden Mandrell, our Assistant Dean of Career Development, who heads Wanderlaw Commonwealth's Career Development Office. We'll be discussing her role in helping students while they're here at our law school and even after they graduate, and some advice for current students and alumni as well. Dean Mandrell, thank you for taking part in today's podcast. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, first off, you've been with our law school for some time, and while we all know that the overall job market can certainly change from year to year and with the effects of the pandemic, I guess my first question for you is, what are you seeing as far as what potential employers in the legal field are looking for? And with all of those things that have happened, including the pandemic, has that changed at all, or has it been pretty consistent as to what, you know, employers are looking for in new graduates? You know, it's interesting. At the beginning of the pandemic, when everything shut down, everyone was very worried about the job market. And um, what I saw was that entry-level positions with certain employers really sort of went away, but the lateral market really picked up, meaning attorneys who had at least a year of experience who were looking to move either from you know law firm to a government position government to law firm or any other type of employer that lateral market really picked up and it has continued to stay very busy through today um, it, uh, my sense is that employers just are dealing with a, a firms, agencies, or whatnot are dealing with a backlog of work, and they are just busier than ever. So the lateral market's really active. But what's nice about that is that has now trickled down into the law student space. So entry-level attorney positions have definitely increased. We are seeing most of our grads, if not all, employed at 10 months, which is the, the, the standard that the ABA measures um, post-graduation. They ask for employment rates for 10 months after graduation. So we are really encouraged by this because our students are, are employed once they graduate or 10 months later. And with your office in particular, the Career Development Office, can you talk a little bit about how your office helps those students prepare for their legal career? And specifically, what are the type of resources that are offered in the Career Development Office here at Widener Law? Sure. So we actually start our relationship with the students from day one. We initially meet with them and tell them that you know, their focus is to focus on grades and getting integrated into school. But quickly thereafter, we ask them to meet with the Career Development Office because we want to make sure that their written work, their, their resume, their cover letters are formatted in the proper legal way. We have students who come from all backgrounds, um, all different types of prior careers, and resumes look different in different employment sectors. Yeah, that's true. And so what we want to do is make sure that the resume is formatted and really puts their best foot forward when it's being presented to employers. So we start that process towards the end of their first semester. And then we have on-campus interview programs. We run several times a year, which means that employers come to us. Um, they interview on campus for a particular day. So we collect students' resumes and cover letters if they're interested in the position. We schedule their interviews for a specific day. And students start interviewing as early as the beginning of their second semester, their first year. And those positions are for summer employment opportunities. So um, employers continually interview throughout the semester. So it's not just that OCI program. Um, we continue to counsel students as they finish their first year to prepare them to get ready for summer positions and internships and externships at the beginning of their second year. So starting in the summer between a student's first and second year, we run a large OCI program. And that's... Now, what is OCI? OCI stands for on-campus interviews. Okay. And um, typically, students will interview in August of, of the summer before their second year for positions following 
their second year. So employers tend to interview very early and um, almost a full year early for positions. So oftentimes a student will get a job in August of the summer before their second year, which will be for the summer after their second year. That's really interesting because you don't see that in a lot of job sectors. That's, that's really interesting that they want to plan that far out. Well, and what's even more interesting is this is sort of the way that the legal market has always worked. And so what happens is employers will hire summer associates the summer before their second year, which means that grades really are, f during your first year are really important. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll hire you to be a summer associate the summer after your second year. And the summer associate positions are really a tryout to be a first year associate post-graduation. Mm -hmm. So... It's really hard to explain when somebody's coming from another sector, when they're coming into law school, that you almost interview for a job two years out. And we, we can have this discussion all day, but a lot, of, a lot of the reason that firms grow so quickly and then shrink and have to lay people off or, you know, they're, they have to hire two years ahead of time. And who knows what's going to happen in those two years in, in the intervening time. And so sometimes firms don't hire enough. And sometimes they hire too much. And so having that crystal ball is really important, but the crystal ball is not always completely accurate. <laughs> um, so taking a step back, we also have a lot of employers that are a little bit more, um, I don't want to say ca cautious, but they're a little bit more thoughtful about their hiring. So they'll wait until the, the, the winter OCI program, which we run in January and February, to hire for the next summer. So if a student doesn't get a job the summer before their second year, it's totally fine because we have a lot of employers who won't hire until the middle of their second year for mm -hmm. the next summer. Um, and include, that, that includes a lot of judges and uh, government agencies. So getting back to the beginning of a student's second year, um, we also run a judicial externship interview program, which is relatively new, and that's we work with all the federal judges in the middle district, and they hire our students for two-year externships, which is fantastic. It's a relatively new program. I think we've been doing about three or four years. Um, Second-year students will apply for a two-semester externship, which will take them for – it will cover the spring of their second year and bridge that summer, and it will continue in the fall of their third year. So that's a program that a lot of second years participate in. And then we continually meet with the students to talk to them about their career goals, give them career advice in terms of developing a job search strategy. If they're interested in working in another geographic area, we help them get reciprocity with other law schools, career development offices. That, that gives them access to the postings that other schools have in their area. And that's a nice thing that um, we're able to provide because we do the same for the other schools. And um, I should mention that we have a really robust database. We call it CORE. Mm -hmm. It's hosted on the 1220 platform. And essentially, CORE is a one-stop shop for our students. They can they can update their resumes in there. They can put in there their job experiences. It's a way for us to track which students are where. Um, our externship director, Liz Simcox, uses that, and she is able to provide them all of the resources they need for their externships through CORE. There's a resource library in CORE, which gives them sample resumes and cover letters and interview prep tips. Um, it's just a really fantastic resource. Not only do we get postings directly from employers that we put into CORE, mm -hmm. but we also um, get jobs that are sourced by 1220 that we upload to CORE, and those are jobs around the country. And so where I'm going with this is that our alums who are interested in continuing to use our database have access to it in perpetuity. So if we have an alum from the beginning who is interested in seeing what jobs may be in the market, mm -hmm. we can give them access to CORE and they can peruse the jobs that are in there. And then the, the 1220 jobs are really great for our students and alums who are considering jobs in other geographic areas. So it's just another tool that our alums and students can use. Um, so going into the third year, we have, uh, I regularly meet with our third years who are really starting to drill down on what it is they want to do. 
And throughout their second and their third year, students will do externships, which is part of our experiential learning program. They get um, the opportunity to work for various <laughs> employers in, in, a, in a variety of settings. And we always are encouraged when students come out of an externship and say, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And that's really the point of an externship, right? It's, 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 you know, we have students who come to school and say, I want to do criminal law. I want to do family law. I want to do environmental law. But they're not really sure what actually the day-to-day entails. Mm-hmm. So doing an externship allows them to live in that practice area and allows them to really get a sense of whether that's something that they want to do for the rest of their career. So I regularly meet with our third years and talk to them about their experiential learning experiences. Mm-hmm. We figure out what, sh- what that has set them up to do for their career. So again, students use CORE. We get postings in there for externships, internships, summer associate positions, um, and postgraduate positions. So our third years will also participate in OCI because we do have several employers who post postgraduate positions with us. Mm-hmm. And then um, they will use our our office as a resource in terms of learning how to apply for various positions. We do cover letter review, resume review um, on a regular basis. So essentially, we look at ourselves as partners with the students, and we help them put themselves in the best light possible in terms of their written materials. And we also do interview prep with them. We recently did a mock interview program where we invited alumni and other friends of the school to campus to do sort of a speed dating mock interview process mm-hmm. and that was a really great experience for our students. My my best advice and my best suggestion for anyone who is looking for a job or thinking about, you know, what the next steps of their career look like is to schedule an appointment and meet with us and mm-hmm. learn how we can help because we have a lot of different ways in which we interact with the students. And the students who I find use our office most successfully are the ones who look at us as a partner in their job search. And that totally makes sense. Um, And obviously there are so many elements of what the Career Development Office utilizes to help students, um, which is just, I think is amazing. I wish they'd had something like that when I was going to school. But a lot has changed since then, obviously. So I want to back up a little bit because I know um, you have an extensive background in the legal field, specifically as a legal legal search consultant. And it sounds like having that inside knowledge about what um, legal practices and other related employers are looking for really helps you in helping students and alumni find out, okay, what is it that you want to do with your career and how can I help you get to that point? Right. So most of my prior career has been in the legal search profession. I worked with associates and and primarily in the lateral space. So I was working with associates who had at least a year or two of experience move from firm to firm or move from firm to in-house. And then the latter part of my career, I was in the partner search arena. So I was working with lateral partners and practice groups and firms who were looking to move their practices to another platform. And so what I've learned through my career is I've learned a lot about what resume should look like. I've learned a lot about what cover letters should look like. I learned about how to interview appropriately for the position that you are looking for. I learned a lot of... um, I guess, things that can be negotiated, things that can't be negotiated in offers. And I've also, you know, I I think part of the thing that has made me successful is I've learned a lot about what makes people tick and what, what it is they're really looking for. Because at the end of the day, you know, people will say that they're looking for money or they're looking for um, more opportunity to get hands-on experience or they're looking for you know, different types of things in order to take their careers to the next level. And so as a essentially recruiter, um, I've met with so many people and it's it's helped me develop the skills to figure out what is really motivating and driving someone into that next position. And so when I take that skill set and I apply it to the students, 
You know, I, I have to get to know them to know what type of environment that they will really thrive in and w- which will allow them to become as, a, you know, a well-rounded attorney and a happy attorney. Obviously, for example, you know, if you have somebody that you talk to that has a real passion, say, for helping victims of crime, for example, or maybe um, a student that says, you know, I really like sort of like more of a courtroom or a litigious type of environment, or I want to work on, you know, environmental policy. So I think that's really important that you take the time to get to know them and make sure that where they're going or where they think that they want to go is really and truly a good fit for them. So, you know, so what would you say is the most in-demand service that students ask for in your office as far as career prep? And also on the flip side, what are the services they should be utilizing more? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, I spend a lot of time reviewing resumes and cover letters and speaking with people about job search strategies. And I think that that is, lately I get a lot of students who come and say, I'm having a hard time finding a job. Can you help me figure out where I should be looking? And I'm happy to do that. There are a lot of different resources out there, even if it's not through my office, that a student can use in order to help find their next internship or externship or summer associate position. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing that I really would like to see more people use, and and it's not for lack of trying, but our resumes need work. And I have always been happy to edit and revise resumes, um, but I can only do that if a student brings that to me. And this year we started a new program. We had uh, peer mentors and peer advisors. And those were second and third year students who had small groups of first years. And we did resume workshops and those students brought their resumes to their peer advisors. Um, The students who do that and who utilize my office and their peer advisors for those types of things do really well in terms of being able to put their best foot forward. We get a lot of students who feel as though their undergraduate resumes still work, and they don't, and that's the the reality of it. We've had federal career clerks come on campus to talk about what resumes should look like. Um, And, you know, it's really important that your paper looks good because at the end of the day, employers are getting hundreds of applications for one position. And if there's something wrong with your resume, it's going to get you, they're not going to give it a second look. Right, right. That makes sense. Um, And resumes really only get a 15, 30 second review before an initial decision is made. So it's important for resumes to look like legal resumes should look. I also highly encourage students to consider having me review cover letters. I would like to see our cover letters be more specific to the opportunities to which students are applying and make sure that they're not, um, that they're addressed appropriately, make sure that they don't have typos, make sure that they are um, really, again, putting the student's best foot forward in terms of their job search. So I do think that the process in terms of you know, having the paper look good, it, it needs to be fine-tuned a little bit more. And mm-hmm. I think that the students would it, would, it would be in the student's best interest to make sure that that is being reviewed before they submit for jobs. And that totally makes sense, too, because that's really their first, in some cases, their first sort of like step through the door to be considered. And you certainly don't want all your work and effort to, you know, result in somebody taking two seconds and saying, okay, this person isn't, yeah, this is not who we're looking for. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I definitely think that, I think in any job sector that's important because for so many people, when they look at your resume and cover letter, that's their first time possibly getting to know you. So you really want to, you know, sort of hit the ground running. <laughs> now for Um, incoming students or prospective students who are listening to this podcast, I know we talked about it initially that, you know, your office is there to help from day one. But what should be their first ultimate steps in career preparation? Because I would think that first-year students, at least initially, are probably pretty overwhelmed. I hear that a lot about first-year students that, you know, at the end of um, the first year, they're just like, oh, I'm so glad I got through it. 
you know, maybe they just don't know where to start. And I think your advice would be super helpful in getting them sort of focused on the right path. So what what should they be doing from the, the initial get go? Sure. So when a student first starts law school, they should not worry about getting a job right away. They really need to focus on school. School is really important. Law school is unlike anything they've ever done before. And so it's important to make sure that you are doing law school right before you start worrying about your legal job. Um, And so that being said, we encourage students to meet with our office starting, I would say, October, November of their first year. And it's really important that they meet with us because we can go over their paperwork, meaning their resume, talk about what a cover letter should look like, talk about their career goals, talk about the different resources my office offers. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to make yourself known to the members of the Career Development Office. And so it's important to have that one-on-one meeting. It's important to, you know, spend an afternoon put, pulling together your resume. And, and I do want to say that it's not essential that somebody comes into law school with legal experience. We get so many students who come in and say, I've never worked in a legal job. I've never done anything legal related. I'm at a disadvantage. And that's not necessarily the case. It's really important to figure out how to, again, place yourself in the best possible light. And working with my office will allow a student to really showcase the things and the skills that they have developed through their life, their career, their education, which will make them a good hire for a legal employer. We had a student a few years ago who worked at a grocery store and started working at a grocery store from a young age and had continued to work for a grocery store Mm. through law school. Mm. And I thought that that was a great example of what could go on a resume. It had nothing to do with the law, but it showed that this person had developed really strong interpersonal skills, that this person was loyal, that this person was a hard worker, that they didn't feel like... They were setting themselves above everyone else because they were, you know, they were working in a grocery store and they did everything there from replacing the fruit to, you know, filling the bags to um, taking inventory. So it it showed that they were well-rounded and willing to learn new things. And that student eventually went on and has a very successful career now as a law clerk. And so I think that it's really important to figure out how to... um, Take the skills and, and, and the experience that you've had through your career and put them down on a piece of paper that showcases who you are and why you would be a good hire. So going back to your question, my advice for incoming students is to, you know, take a deep breath, walk into school, <laughs> figure out <laughs> how you're going to do school, get through your first set of midterms, and then come see the Career Development Office. Um, and we can talk to you about how to best go after the goals that you've set for yourself. And I know we've talked a little bit about alumni before, um, but specifically for alumni who may either want to help law students with their employment opportunities, or they might want to look for an additional career opportunity, but may want to kind of do it very discreetly. What's the best way that they can reach your office and connect? So the best way is just to email me. Email me or give me a call. Um, Our office is very discreet. I'm always happy to talk with an alum, go over a resume with them, talk to them about what the market looks like, help them with different job search strategies, and provide access to CORE. And your email? E-L Mandrell, with two L's, at widener.edu. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Dean Mandrell, for taking the time to be with us today. And obviously, a lot of really good information, super helpful to share across the board, whether you are a prospective student, whether you are a current student, and even those who are alumni or maybe even partners in the field that may want to connect with you and help with um, getting students up to speed, job opportunities, and those sorts of things. So, If you want more information on how to connect with Dean Mandrell, she did give her email address earlier. Um, You can also go to our website at commonwealthlaw.widener.edu and in the search option, type career development. And in addition to emailing her, you can also reach her office by calling 717-541-1976. Thank you for listening to this edition of the podcast. And until next time, take care and be safe. 
Widener University Commonwealth Law School is the Pennsylvania capital's only law school, with three specialized centers of legal scholarship through its Law and Government Institute, Environmental Law and Sustainability Center, and Business Advising Program. Widener Law Commonwealth offers an exceptional learning experience that is personal, practical, and professional. Visit commonwealthlaw.widener.edu for more information.